Welcome, I'm Sherlock Holmes from hometownhero.com. In this video, I'm going to be unboxing the Kangertech K-Pin Starter Kit, showing you how to fill it, how it works, and telling you everything that you need to know about this starter kit. This starter kit is great for beginners and seasoned vapors alike. Let's jump right down, we'll unbox it, take a look at it, then we'll talk more about it. This is the box that the Kanger Tech K-Pin will come in. Right there on the box you have an authenticity sticker. There is also one inside the package. Let's go ahead and open this up. I'll show you everything that comes with your K-Pin. Inside the box, you are going to receive a user manual. So at any point, if you get stuck, you can reference this. This is the authenticity card. In here, you can see we have the K-Pin itself. And I will, of course, be going over this, how to use it, how to fill it. You have your USB cable for charging it. This can be plugged into a computer or a wall mount. And it comes with 2.2 ohm stainless steel coil heads. The K-Pin is a very, very easy device to use. Very simple, two basic pieces. We have the battery and the atomizer. And you can see them right here, they come apart. And before you get going and get started, you wanna just make sure that your battery is charged so you can use the included USB and plug it in directly right there. It is very, very easy to operate. You have one button, that is it. That is your power button and your fire button. Five clicks turns it on. You'll see the indicator lights blink. That means it's on. So anytime you fire it, it'll show you these lights and these are actually your battery indicator lights as well so five lights means your battery's full and as the lights turn off as they get smaller the less battery you have there's nothing to adjust press the button and it will fire five clicks will turn it off as well it'll flash and then it'll be off you can press the button and it will not fire up here on top you have your 510 connection and that is where your atomizer screws on. While you're letting this charge for the first time, we can set up the atomizers. Here's the atomizer. Very, very simple. Up here at the top, we have the mouthpiece. You twist and the mouthpiece will pop up and down. So if you're not using it and you wanna stick this in your pocket or something, you can twist the, the mouthpiece down so it's not in contact with whatever's in your pocket. Again, very simple. The atomizer itself has three pieces twist righty tighty lefty loosey and the mouthpiece comes off you can see this is where you're going to actually fill your tank and you don't want to fill it all the way up but I'll show you I'll show you filling it where to fill it to safe levels down here at the bottom this black piece comes off as well you can see those holes there's three of them one two three those are your airflow holes that's where your airflow is going to be pulled in and up through the coil, up through the mouthpiece. They aren't adjustable, nothing to fuss with. They just are the way they are. So again, very, very easy. If you unscrew this piece, you're gonna see you're left with this base plate here. And this is where your coil is actually going to be installed. And then this is the tank. This is the chimney part as well. Your coil goes up into here. So once that goes together, you can see that's a direct line of sight down to the coil. So as you pull, on the mouthpiece it pulls air all the way through through those air holes we don't want to just throw a coil in here fill it up and start vaping it the cotton in the coil needs to be saturated here's your coil head as i said it does come with two of them they're very inexpensive and readily available to install your coil you take this end this narrow end and put it right into there and then you just twist you just screw it on and you don't have to crank it down, just be nice and easy with it, just till you feel it 
nice and tight, and now your coil's installed. Again, very, very simple. Inside there, you can see the metal coil with the cotton around the outside, same cotton you can see here. These are your wicking holes. You have two of them. That cotton is going to wick the juice in from the outside, saturate that whole coil. When you fire your vape, that coil is going to heat up and vaporize that juice and that cycle is going to continue. We want to prime the coil and that's just letting it soak up some juice so that it's ready to go and we're not trying to fire on dry cotton because then we're going to get a burnt taste, we're going to ruin the coil. We're just going to take our juice, I'm using Ultra in the Laser Wolf line by Hometown Hero. This is a delicious sticky bun ice cream. I'm doing a little bit higher of a nicotine level because I like that nice throat hit, I like that nice kick. But to prime our coils, it's really easy. I'm going to put a dab here on this wick hole. Just a little dab. I'm going to turn it over and just again, just put a little bit of juice. I'm not even squeezing it out. I'm just kind of dabbing it there to get that that cotton started a little bit. And then on the inside here, I'm not just going to like pour it down the middle because then the juice will be leaking out of the airflow and we just don't want that to happen. I'm going to tilt it a little bit at an angle and just put a little bit of juice on the inside as I rotate it. Just a little bit. I'm gonna give it a second, let it soak in a bit, and do it again, just a little bit of juice. You can see in my dropper there, I'm not putting a ton, but I just wanna get the cotton nice and saturated, just get it started. And then once it's saturated, it'll wick beautifully right through those two holes. You don't need to go crazy. If you do, if you have a little bit of leaking, don't worry about it. Just wipe it up with a paper towel and just make sure you wipe your hands off. Rinse your hands if you get any on your hands. Dropping a little at the top, letting it go, hitting these sides again. Normally what I will do is let this sit for a minute, two minutes, up to five minutes if I really wanna make sure it's all set. And in the meantime, what you can do is start assembling your atomizer. You can see the open side up here where it's open and you can see down into it that's going to be the top that's where you're going to actually fill the tank and down here at the bottom where it's all closed off this is where your coil is installed really simple to put everything back together there's a gasket there it's going to keep everything from leaking there's gaskets all over here so you don't have to worry about the leaking i'm going to take the actual tank and the built-in chimney and i'm just going to pop it on and i'm going to push it up over that gasket and twist it and just turn it again until it's nice and tight. You don't have to go cranking on it. Those O-rings will keep everything together for you. We have two big open windows here so you can see how much juice you have left in your tank. Now we're gonna fill the tank. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick the dropper or the plastic tip right on the side there. And we're just gonna squeeze the juice down into the side. Don't get it in that center hole because you're gonna flood out the coil. Just make sure you keep your dropper on the outside and squeeze your juice in. When you're filling this, you don't wanna go crazy. You don't wanna fill it so much that it's gonna be leaking up over everything. You can see there, that window, you can see how much I have in there. You wanna fill it up to right below this middle piece there. I'm looking pretty good right there. I don't wanna overfill it, so I'm gonna cool it and just keep it right there. I'm gonna take the top, this the mouth piece I'm gonna set it right on top and just twist again don't have to crank it down you're gonna see the mouthpiece retract and then just tighten it down nice and you can see you've got fully operational mouthpiece this has been sitting for a while I'm pretty sure it's nice and primed we have a charged battery we have a filled tank all you need to do is stick the two back together and your starter kit's all set. Five clicks, turn it on. And I'm ready to go. This thing is a great, great little starter kit. Especially for beginners, and really myself as a seasoned vapor, I love it too. It comes in a bunch of different colors. There's nothing to adjust, nothing other than filling it and charging it. Other than that, it just, does everything for you. There's nothing to mess with. It's all self-contained. You can use three milligram, six milligram, nine milligram, any nicotine level juice can be used in this thing. And you can also use different VGPG ratio juices. I showed you how to fill it and the same principle applies when you need to refill it. You just untwist the mouthpiece, fill the tank, 
and screw it back on. As soon as you feel it grip in there, that, that's enough. And then you can twist back up the mouthpiece. If that's how you use it, you can use it with the mouth, mouthpiece down, mouthpiece up. It's a preference thing. This gives a fantastic vaping experience. The more nicotine that's in your juice, the more of a throat hit you're going to receive when you vape. So definitely keep that in mind. And also the more PG that's in your juice, the more of a throat hit that you're going to get. To charge it from zero to completely full, it takes around 30, 30 minutes to an hour, not long at all, and then you're good to go. Depending on how you're hitting this, this can last half a day to up to two days. It has great battery life. The internal battery is 2000 milliamp hours and it's encased, it's internal, you cannot take it out. Again, you charge it via the USB port on the mod, plug it into the mod and the wall or your computer. The coils are somewhat the same as in how long they last depends on how often you use this. But in general, you can get anywhere between two weeks to a month out of each individual coil. This takes the SSOCC Kanger coils. They are very, very readily available. You can find them anywhere. Kanger uses them in most of their sub ohm tanks. There are different types of coils and different coils will do different things in effect the experience of the vape. These are a 0.2, so the larger the number, if you get a 0.6 or a 1.2, the larger the number, the more restricted of a hit you're going to receive. So keep that in mind if you're buying replacement coils. You'll know it's time to change your coil. It'll taste different. You'll be able to tell almost immediately if it starts tasting different in any way, burnt at all, it's definitely time to change out that coil. And you're gonna change it out the same way that you set it in the first time. Remember to prime your coil. If you try to fire your mod and fire that coil without it being saturated, you're going to burn that cotton and ruin that coil. So take the couple minutes and prime your coil. You don't have to change it every time you fill it if you're using the same flavor. Definitely change out your coils if you're going to be swapping flavors. And it is a good idea when you change your coils to rinse out and clean the actual tank, the atomizer. And to do that, you just take your coil out and the other three pieces, the bottom, the tank, and the mouthpiece can all just be rinsed with hot water and then set to dry. You can wipe them down with a paper towel, leave them on a paper towel to dry. Again, I love how easy this this is to use. There is no wattage adjustment. There's no power adjustment. Really easy. The battery indicator shows up every time you hit it with those five LEDs. The power is directly tied to battery life. So as your battery diminishes, you'll start to feel the power drop and that's how you'll know when it's time to charge it. Try not to run the battery completely dry. When you feel the power start to drop, that's when you're going to want to charge the battery. A few things I do want to say about maintaining Maintaining your device. You want to keep this out of extreme hot and extreme cold because the battery won't fare well in those environments and you just want to be safe. If you drop it, make sure you take a look at it, make sure everything's functioning correctly before you proceed to use that again. And if you have any doubts at all, just put it down and seek help. I highly recommend turning it off if you're not using it. If it fires accidentally and gets held on the fire position, it will fry your cotton and can put too much stress on the battery and you just really don't wanna go there. So make sure you turn it off, turn it off before you stick it in your pocket. It's just a good habit. Again, five clicks on, five clicks off. If you're having trouble with your starter kit or have any questions, feel free to email us at help at hometownhero.com. You can always leave a comment down below and we'll get to you that way. And if you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you wanna see more content like this. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Sherlock Holmes for Hometown Hero Vapor. We'll see you next time.